Hallelujah. You know, you've been on the milk. Now you need to, what you call lumps is meat. Meat. Get that meat in you. That nobody can penetrate this. Because all the battle is not out there. I don't have to go and bind any more demons. I just have to get a new mind. And a new belief system. And know their place. That they have no authority over my God. I'm with Him. You see, God right here. And God has already won that battle. Yes. Jesus has already won that battle. Glory. So you know how many Christians are going around fighting battles that have already been won? Yes. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, pastor, pastor. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, you're not going to believe it. Come, come. Bring a big team. Oh. <laughs> Forget the big team. Bring the big God. I want you to get on your face before the Lord and fast and pray. Not because, so you can turn the head of God. So that, no, so that you can turn your head and find God is the God who he says he is. And you don't belong to the devil, you belong to God. And nobody can pluck you from his hand. Turn your Bibles to Galatians 2. And verse... Verse 20. Galatians 2, verse 20. And it says there, I. Now say your name. Mark. Say your name again. Mark has been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <laughs> I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. So in grace I live. And I no longer live is the best place to be. Is the best place to be because I don't need what the commercials tell me I need. I don't need a break today. I don't need a break today. <laughs> I got breakthrough in my life and it's way greater than a break. And I have the glory and the spirit of God that manifests with me. And he's there when I sleep and when I wake up. And he's there to tell me the plans that he has for me, prospering me every day of my life. And I don't keep that to myself because it is contagious. And I see people that are living out there in the dark or in the rut. And God wants to pull you up. But he's saying to you, take what I've given you. And step out of the rut. Take what I've given you. And step out of the rut. Take what I've given you. And leave the enemy behind. You're already victorious. The battle is here. Heaven. Trouble invading earth. Is getting slowed down in your head. You know, they said you were slow. They lied. You're smart. You are smart. In fact, you have the wisdom of God. That's smarter than smart. If that even makes sense, but it's true. But, you've just been believing a lie. You've just been believing a lie, but that's about to change. Tell your neighbor, that's about to change. Change is in the air. Change is in the Spirit of God over your life. The greatest move of God. How many wants it? How many want it? The greatest move of God. Okay, listen, listen. You're going to find out. 
God wants to hand out the key to you. How many want to take it home with them? The greatest move of God. Do you know, I said, God, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it. God, the, I know, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. The greatest move of God this world has ever seen. I said, God, I want to be right there. I, I mean, how many want to be right there? You, you want to be part of the history that God is making on the earth today. Well, God wants to give you the key of the greatest move of God. Now listen, wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. The greatest move of God is a move of God. The greatest move of God that could ever exist is a move of God. Hello? The greatest move of God is a move of God. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. How come we're not seeing it? The greatest move of God is a move of God. There's none greater than God. So if God moves, it's the greatest move. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? If God moves, it's the greatest move of God. There's none greater. Come on. Come on. Come on, you're getting it. You're getting it. Because there's none greater than God. The greatest move of God is when man opens the door and lets God in and stays out of the way. I'm just a doorkeeper. I'm just a chauffeur. Uh, they're not cheering for me. They're cheering for him. You know, imagine the donkey that was carrying Jesus and all those people were waving their, their palm branches and, and shouting and shouting. And I mean, he can't speak English. But he's going like, wow, they really love me. Woo, this is my best day ever. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I never had this before. You know what? We have a move of God and we say, "Wow, look 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 what it was. look God, I just healed somebody. Look what I did." I didn't do anything. God healed that man. God healed that woman. God healed that toe. If I was in control, I probably would have not even thought about the toe. But God cares. God cares. And if I could just stay out of the way, but yet open the way. If I could just open the way, but stay out of the way. And that I could be a place where the Lord is free. Do you ever notice a lot of your prayers are about yourself? And even about the family that you have. And even about the people that you care about. But how often have you prayed for God? How often have you said, God, what do you want to do today? Huh? What do you want to do? What's in your heart? What's aching? What's burning? I know you want to go somewhere. I know you want to do something. I could feel it. God, you can tell me. Tell me what you want to do. Because I'm going to be on it. Like, I'm, like, listen, we're going to open up the doors. We're going to swing wide the gates. Those ancient doors, hey, give me some of your oil. You got Holy Ghost oil that you gave me last week? Oh, yeah, my neck feels so much better. Let's try it on those hinges of the, of the nation of Canada. <laughs> oh, I know it's been a long time that they've been open for you like this, but, but guess what? I'm going to pour out the oil. I'll pour out the oil because cause you're coming in. you got to come to Canada. Canada's about to be saved. Canada's about to be saved. God is going to tell you God-sized dreams. God-sized opportunities. Not because you are appointed and anointed for greater things. 
but that he's greater. He's supernatural. He's naturally supernatural. Wherever he goes, nations are going to change. Demons are going to bow. Lives are going to be set free. Nations are going to be turned upside right. Marriages are going to be restored. Not because we marched enough around Parliament Hill, but because we let one step on that hill and we said, God, this place belongs to you. My own daughter saw the demons coming to and fro from the Parliament buildings. And I said, no. I said, no. And I didn't want to hear it. I didn't want to, like, I mean, that's too, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, I, she's only four. And they called it the Green Castle. Demons coming to and fro, to and fro. I said, what are they doing? And they said, well, they go up to heaven and they make these decisions and then they come back down. Negotiating what's going to happen next in this nation. Then, so what are we going to do? Then all of a sudden, listen, sometimes you, you know what? We think so small. I got to get over there and march down there. I got to march around that building. We got to claim that. Let's go, let's go put some oil on there. And now oh, that's good. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If God tells you to do it, do it. But we do a lot of things without asking him first. God, what's it in your heart? Okay, and then after that, I thought, oh, man. But I said, Lord, you just, you know, i just give it back to you. I don't know. That's too big for me. I don't know. I don't know about you, but that's what I think. I'm like, that's too big for me. Because if one day I think that, that I'm big enough for that, <sighs> it's not about me. So there I am next morning. The Lord has me, get down to the basement. Get on your face. And I start crying out to the Lord, crying out. And I, I don't know what God wants, but he just wants me to pray. And I'm just crying out to God. I'm just one man, but, but I'm connecting with a big God, Almighty. And all of a sudden, he says to me, Mark, I'm giving you a thousand warrior angels. Wow. What are you going to do with them? I said, Lord, send them to Parliament Hill. Yes. The next day, My kids were like, they're, 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 they're young and I they, they couldn't get them going in the morning and, and, and I thought, you know what, we'll stay home from church today. We'll have church here. Now I'm not saying you should always do that. But I'm saying if God tells you to, well, that's, that's dangerous. <laughs> but you know, there we were. And I said, kids, let's listen to God. What does he have to say to us? So we had our own church service that, that morning. And they all heard from God. And my other daughter, she's six at the time. And she says, Daddy, I, I, I see a picture of the green castle. And Jesus is sitting on the castle. And he's got a big smile on his face. He's the king of the castle. But God can move that way every day. Every day. It's just been off our radar of our thoughts. We've been so occupied and consumed by, 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 by where I fit and where I belong. And, and, and how come the pastor never calls on me? Did you see he walked past me again? He's probably off going doing his thing. Yeah, helping the lady at the back that, that, that is calling out, God, please help me. Or maybe he's just tired. Okay, let's not be so spiritual. Maybe he's just tired. Can you let him go? He's not your rock. You can't put your trust in, in your pastor. But you put your trust in the God he puts his trust in.
that's the key.